Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here. So in uh, this uh, first lecture, I'm going to show you how you can start PFSense and how can you start doing the configuration, the initial configuration on PFSense. So I'm going to uh, connect the PFSense to the internet and I'm going to connect it to a PC and then I'm going to start making the configuration on the PFSense so the PC is able to go to the internet. So, and of course, I'm going to show you how you can change the name of the PFSense, how you can uh, put uh, the domain name, how you can enable the HTTP, how you can play with the uh, interfaces and make the assignment. All of those things will be shown in this lecture. So let me just directly show you what we have now as uh, a scenario connected and uh, let's see what we have to do. So this is what uh, my lab scenario is. I have here the internet, which is providing IP address via the HTTP server. And here I have PFSense, which is connected to the WAN interfaces to the internet, which is the EM0. That is the interface called the EM0 on PFSense. And then I have on EM1, which is the LAN, I have my computer connected. So this lab is going to be, and all this course is going to be based on GNS3, which is for the virtualization. And I do have a course uh, which is uh, where I'm showing how you can install uh, PFSense on GNS3 and uh, make it work. So if you want to uh, see uh, that before you follow this course, I will leave for you the link in this uh, lecture so you can uh, buy that course. You can see how we, we have connected GNS3 and PFSense together and then you can start doing the lab. Of course, if you do have a device from PFSense, well, from actually it's NetGate, if you have a NetGate device where a PFSense operating system is installed on it, then no problem. You can use that also to follow the labs. So before I start showing you what is the GNS3 scenario that I'm, how I'm connected, I just want to mention that PFSense is based on FreeBSD. So it's an open source operating system. So, so that's something you have to remember because a lot of people think that PFSense is not an open source. It is an open source uh, uh, operating system that you can use. So you can uh, use the operating system on a cloud. So that means in data center, you install it on a server, and then you can gain access to the PFSense, or you can buy it a hardware, which is uh, at this moment, there is only NetGate doing hardware with PFSense operating system. Or if you don't want to make uh, any payment, you can just get it on uh, the uh, GNS3. So you get the community version, and then you can put it on GNS3 and you have PFSense working to do the labs. Now let's go to GNS3 to show you what I have here. So this is my scenario. It's the same scenario that I have uh, shown you before in uh, the course where I was speaking about the uh, GNS3 and PFSense. So this is my PFSense, this is EM0, which is the one, this is EM1, which is the LAN. Over here, the cloud, if we go inside the cloud, I have put the LAN interface that where I'm connected. So this LAN interface over here is a loopback interface. And uh, if you want, I can show you that very fast. So let me just go to uh, the uh, advanced networks and settings. Over here, we go to um, the adapters. So you can see this is the LAN, this is Microsoft KM test loopback. So this is a loopback interface, which is representing my computer as a LAN. Now from that side, on the uh, one side, so I put another cloud, which is cloud three. In my GNS3 course, I have used uh, the cloud, which is uh, actually the NAT one, this one I used. Now on the, this course, I need the internet to flow from here to the PFSense and then from the PFSense to the PC or to the other devices that I'm going to connect. That's why what I did, I just over here put Ethernet 2. So Ethernet 2 is my physical interface on my computer. So I just put Ethernet 2 where the internet is coming to that interface and then I connect it to the PFSense on EM1. So Ethernet 2, if you look at it, if we go back to here, so this is Ethernet 2. You can see it is a, um, a network, a physical network interface. Um, I'm connecting using the USB Ethernet adapter. So that's where the Internet is coming. All right. So this inter interface will be providing Internet to the PFSense. So that's what the lab is. So now let's go and see what the points that we have to do and then we start them one by one. So in this lab we only have one point which is make the initial setup on PFSense. Of course this point is uh, looks very small but we'll see now that there are a lot of uh, steps that we need to do. 
So um, let's put the picture here and let me show you what we have now. So if you go back to the picture, we see that uh, in a moment, uh, I will show you that we receive an IP address on EM0, which is the WAN, and we have received an IP address on EM1, which is the LAN. And if you want, I can show you that directly. We go to here, and it is uh, from the PF sense on GNS3, you see that EM0, which is the WAN, has received one an IP 192.168.23.24.248, which is the uh, IP I got from the uh, network interface card, which is now the one uh, side. And I have received on the uh, EM1, which is the LAN, an IP of 192.168.1.1. This is by default what is provided by PFSense on the LAN side. So that means if my computer, which is connected to the LAN side, if I want to access to PFSense, I need to put an IP on it from the same range, which is 192.168.1.something. And that's something I have already done, it's just to win time. And I can show you that if we go again to the network uh, interfaces over here, on the LAN side, there is the LAN interface, which is connected to PFSense. I have put an IP here, which is 192.168.1.2. So if I now go to the comment uh, prompt, and from here I try to ping, from my computer to 192.168.1.1, which is the IP of PFSense, I see I can gain connect to it. So now, something to remember. PFSense, to make the configuration, is always on the web interface. All right, so that means I have to go to the Internet Explorer or the Edge or the Chrome or uh, Firefox or whatever the browser you want to use. So uh, I'm going to go now to the Edge. And over here, you can put the IP of the PFSense, one as one say dot one dot one, and here we go. So now it's saying that your connection is not private. You say here, advance, continue. So here we go. We are now on PFSense. By default, the username and password of uh, PFSense is uh, username admin and password PFSense and all small letters. So let's do it. Admin and PFSense. So this is the password if you want to see it. Admin PF Sans, and now sign in, and here we go. All right, very good. So now we are inside PF Sans. So this is the initial setup that we are going to start now. Now, first we have to say here, next, here they say that you will get the availability 24 hours from NetGate the global support. So if you want to read some more information about that, so say here next, here we start. First, we have to give a name for the router, so I'm going to leave it pfSense. The domain name, you can choose it whatever, so I'm going to use here home.local, that is the domain name. The primary DNS, so that's the DNS that you are going to put on the pfSense, so I'm going to use a.a.a.a and 1.1.1.1. Here they say for you override DNS, allow DNS server to be overridden by DHCP and PPP on the one. That means what? That means if your ISP, if you check that one, if I just, if uh, it is checked now. So uh, one is checked. So if your ISP is giving to your router uh, with the IP address on the one and the subnet mask and the gateway is, go, is giving to you also DNS, then those DNS that are provided from the ISP will be taking place the, uh, uh, the DNS that we have listed over here. In my case, I don't want that I'm getting the IP address of DNS from the ISP, so I just uncheck it. All right, so let's now move forward. So next. All right, so now over here, you have to put the NTP. The NTP is the protocol for the timing, so your PFSense uh, uh, appliance will have the uh, right time. So I'm in the Netherlands, so here I can look on Europe, Amsterdam. And then that's what I need to put here. Depend where you are and which country, just put the time zone of your country and then you say next. Now, this is the one side. Remember, we have the one and we have the land side. The one side, they are saying, how are you connecting to the ISP? So if you have the ISP giving you the uh, internet via DHCP or via PPPoE or via static. So you can see you have here the different options, static, that means they give you a static IP you have to put on the router, DHCP, which is in my case DHCP, PPPoE, which is point to point over Ethernet, or PPTP. So in my case, it is DHCP. So I'm getting the IP address, the subnet match, the gateway, and so forth via DHCP on my one side. So that's all what you need to do over here. You can see 
if you make static for example then you have the static portion over here you can put the ip and the gateway that the, in case it's a static if you put pppoe then this will open for you to put the information for pppoe and so forth so i'm going to make the scp and then over here that's very important to remember so you have block rfc 1918 private network uh, private network so what is the rfc 1918 those are the ip addresses which we call them private ip addresses that means the ips that are not routed to the internet but those ips that can be used inside our network so we all know about 192.168. something dot something or 10.0. something dot something or 172.16. something dot something so those are called the rfc 19 18. So, if you don't want that, you get um, from the, uh, because in case, for example, your ISP is giving you only public IP address, right? So, if you don't want that, you get a, a private IP address on your WAN interface because you may think that it can be an attack on you, then you can say block private network. But in my case, I'm using double NAT because, you know, remember, I'm putting the one side as my physical network interface card giving a private IP address. So if I leave this checked, then I will not have internet anymore. So I have to uncheck that one. And here we have the Bogon networks. Bogon networks means networks that should not be shown on the WAN. Something like 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. So this IP or whatever it's called, the network, should not be shown on the WAN. Or some other I like, 127, which is the loopback, .0 .0 because people use that possibly to make some attacks. So also you can block the, them, but because again, I'm using a lab with GNS3, I'm not going to check those two. So I'll just uncheck them and then I'll say next. Now, what is the LAN address? So remember, we have here, if we go back to the picture, so this is the one is finished. Now they're asking, what is the LAN address that you want to put on this interface? All right, which is by default, one actually one say dot one dot one. So you want to change that or leave it by default? You may need to change it, yeah. Um, so maybe you don't want to leave it as default, but in my case, I'm gonna leave it as default, which is 1.1. .1. So I'm not gonna change anything here. The subnet is 24, that's fine. Now the admin password. So remember the password is pfSense. Now here they are saying to you, change the password. I'm gonna make also something simple as being a lab. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is, is going to be used for the web uh, GUI, which is uh, we have now, and SSH. That means if you want to connect to the PFSense firewall router using SSH, then uh, which is the command line, then you can also use username as admin and password one two six, and then next. Now you have here to reload, so the changes can happen. So I have to say here reload and a reload is now in progress please wait the wizard will redirect and here we go so now the pfsense has been reloaded so you can see now that uh, this is already finished congratulations pfsense is now configured and then i will say here finish you have to accept here the uh, copyright and the trade mark notices and then that's it so now believe it or not our pfsense is up and running very very good so uh, that's what uh, we have uh, for now um, the steps that uh, i wanted to show you um, of course uh, we have to do some more things uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, lectures but for now this is all what i wanted to show on this lecture i hope that this lecture was informative for you and i'll see you in the upcoming lecture